so let, let's start with an observation. So what do we know about the derivative of the product of the functions of x, g, x? I know that this integral, uh, this derivative is really the product of f prime of x, g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. Okay. So in other words, if you differentiate this function, you're going to get this. So this means if I integrate f prime of x g of x plus f of x g prime of x dx okay and I ask from you what is the antiderivative of this function in other words what is the antiderivative of this function you're going to say it is going to be some function to which if I differentiate I must get this the question is what is that function to which if you differentiate you're going to get this this function is this actually. so the antiderivative of this f prime of x gx and f of x g prime of x is really dx so it's going to be f of x multiplied by gx by definition of antiderivative because if I derivate this function I get this expression so the antiderivative of this must be this expression. Okay. Now if I simplify this function, so you have you have the two integrals actually. So I can say that f prime of x g of x dx plus f of x times g prime of x dx is equal to f of x, f of x g of x. So you can integrate both separately. And hence, what you can do, you can say for example, let's write this that what would be the value of f of x multiplied by g prime of x dx. Okay? This is a bit different from what you have previously. Previously you have f of g of x multiplied by the g prime of x but now you are saying no 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 Fun the function f of x is multiplied with the g prime of x the question is how to compute this integral this integral is going to be product of f of x g of x minus say this integral in other words f prime of x g of x dx Okay. F prime of x g x by dx. This formula is called integration by parts. Okay. This formula is called integration by parts. So if you have to compute, for example, integral of f of x multiplied by some derivative of some function, so what you can do? F of x multiplied by the derivative of some fun functions. Take both functions, multiply them, f of x gx minus integrate the derivative of f multiplied by g of x. Okay. Another way to write is this actually, that if for example you call u to be f of x okay, and v to be say, um, what do you call? Um, g prime of x or maybe v to be g of x then what would be v prime? So the v prime is going to be in other words dv by dx so the dv by dx is going to be g prime of x and hence you can say that your dv is g prime of x dx so now you can rewrite this integral in this manner. So this will become u dv, this entire is dv, equal to minus, uh, equal to uv minus v 
which is g of x and du. So what would be du? So if the dv is g prime of x dx, du is going to be f prime of x dx. So it's going to be v du. This is another version of what do you call uh, integration by parts. Both of them are useful. Okay, I'm going to use this one actually for most of the cases and this will work actually but you, know, you can also use this as well. What is, you know, how to use for example this integral? It looks complicated but it's not that complicated. You're going to see once you use it, you can um, do it easily. So if you have x sin x dx, Okay, I want to integrate. Question. If you, so you always have to compare it with, for example, this formula. Now there you have x sin x, and here you have f of x g prime of x. The question is, what I take as f of x and what I take as you know, what do you call g prime of x So if you have, here is a simple hint. If you have say x sin x, or say x e to the x exponential function or say you know um, uh, x log x no, not log x actually in log x you have to do a bit different take okay. x sin x or x you know cos x x e to the x or x square e to the x in all such situations what you gonna do you always take g that function to which you can integrate easily okay and by easily i'm gonna mean this actually i'm gonna later talk about that why some functions are easier to you know um, what do you call integrate and some are not actually. So, if you have to compare this with this, then what should be your f of x and what should be your g of x? Your f of x should be, so if you have a trigonometric function, sine, cos, an exponential function, then your f, f of x must be the algebraic function. And take g prime as what do you call uh, the other function, sine, cosine, or exponential? I'm not talking about log. I'm not talking about inverse tangent function actually. And there is a wisdom behind actually that why you are taking x square as f of x, and why you are not taking, you know, f of x as sine x. Actually, I'm going to talk in a minute about it as well. But if you have an algebraic function multiplied by sin x or cos x or algebraic function multiplied by exponential function, then always take f of x as algebraic function and g prime of x as the trigonometric function or the exponential function actually. Okay? So in this situation. Why we are doing it, I'm going to tell in a moment actually. So let's first solve the easy function, okay? So the easy integral, and let's take for example f of x to be x and g prime of x to be sine x. Okay. And in order to compute this, what you need, you need f of x. You already have it. You need g of x. I don't have it. I need f prime of x, I can calculate f prime from here, and I need g of x, this is something that I want. 
So let's first calculate f prime of x. So what would be f prime of x actually? So the f prime of x is going to be 1. So here you have the other, other way around. So if the g prime of x is sin x, what would be the integral of g prime of x dx? In other words, the integral of sin x. I know the integral of g prime of x sin x is g of g, uh, is g of x. Okay. So if you integrate the g prime, what is the antiderivative of g prime? So it should be g because if you derivate g, you're going to get g prime. What is the antiderivative of sin x? So it's really what do you call negative cosine x. So now you have all four ingredients of other side of the integral. So you have f of x, you have g of x, you have f prime of x, you have g prime of g of x. Substitute it. So when you're going to substitute it, what are you going to get? So f of x, g prime of x, x sine x dx equal to f of x, g of x means x multiplied by 1 minus f prime of x so the f prime of x will become is 1 multiplied by g of x is really negative cosine x dx so this integral will become x minus I can take this negative one out so it's going to be plus cosine of x and b so what would be the integral of cosine of x? So it's going to be x plus um, sine x plus constant. Okay, x plus constant c. Oh, sorry. Here you're not going to have um, g of f of this is going to be x multiplied by the cosine x yes okay. x multiplied because g of x is negative cosine x so you're going to have a minus cosine x you're going to have minus x cosine x and you're going to have minus x cosine x so this is really if the function if you compute the derivative of it you're going to get x sine so the trick was that if you have a sine or a cos multiplied with say some algebraic function x, take algebraic function as f of x and take um, what do you call g prime as, as the sine function, cos function or exponential function. And then calculate the f prime of x, g prime of x and then you know um, calculate the integral. Now you can say why should I choose f as x and why should I choose g prime as uh, f of x and the answer is you know give it a try let's see what happens. So if I take my f of x for example as a sin x and g prime of x as a say um, what do you call uh, x okay then what will happen. I know that f prime of x is going to be cosine of x, so far so good. So the g prime of x, in other words, integrate both sides with respect to dx. So this is going to be g of x and this is going to be x square upon 2. You can put the constant if you wish, but you know, otherwise you can put the constant in the end actually. So this is my g of x. So now substitute the value. So f of x multiplied by g prime of x. Again, it will become x sine x dx. Okay. F of x multiplied by g of x. So it's going to be x square cosine of x divided by two minus f prime of x. F prime of x is cosine x. multiplied by g of x, g of x is x square upon 2, x square, x square, let's put 1 upon 2 outside and we have this dx. 
now you have a trouble. The trouble is before that you have an x sin x and you wanted to integrate it but this integral is if you took f of x to be sin x and g prime of x to be x this becomes a this integral x square cos x now what you gonna do so how are you gonna solve this integral you're gonna say okay I'm again applying gonna apply what do you call this formula but how are you gonna apply this formula are you going to again take f of x equal to cos x and g prime of x to be x square because if g prime of x is going to be x square g of x is going to be cubic function actually and hence when you're going to simplify a similar term will appear in which you're going to have x cube and sine so the problem is not solved this power of x is keep on increasing actually okay it just keeps on increasing if you are making the wrong choices actually so the, your integral is not being simplified it's being even more complicated actually so therefore if you have an algebraic polynomial multiplied with sin x cos x or e to the x then take f of x as um, what do you call uh, uh, x algebraic function and take uh, what do you call sin x or cos x or e to the x as g prime of x so this is the trick number one actually that would always work so instead of now for example instead of so let's do this ex experiment with this function x square e to the x dx so as per my suggestion f of x the clever choice should be that f of x must be in order to compare this with this f of x should be x square and g prime of x must be e to the x actually so in order to compute the other side you need f of x g of x f prime of x and g of x so i have f of x i just need to compute f prime and g, g of x so the f prime of x is going to be 2x and g prime of x in other words for computing g of x you need to integrate both sides so the integral of g prime of x is going to be g of x and integral of e power x is going to be e to the x of okay and simplify okay simplify so if you substitute now the formulas the values in this function this integration by parts formula you're going to get x square e to the x dx okay equal to f of x which is x square g of x which is e to the x minus f prime of x which is 2x and g of x which is e to the x so you're going to get x square e to the x minus 2 x e to the x sector. Still problem is not solved, but it's better than previous. That here you have x square e to the x, but now you have x e to the x actually. So the 1 power is reduced actually. While if I, if I could make the wrong choices, so if I take for example this as g prime of x and this as e to the x, then here you will you will see that x cube upon 3 will appear actually so here x cube upon 3 will appear so it will kind of you know not solve the problem but it will increase the problem actually okay but making the correct choices allow you to do the good calculations actually should I do now so let's calculate this integral separately and then substitute it here so let's call this for example equation number one and let's calculate this integral separate x e to the x dx again take f of x to be x and g prime of x to be e to the x again 
f prime of x is going to be 1 and g of x is going to be the integral of e to the x dx so it's going to be e to the x and then you can substitute into the formula so f of x g prime of x so x e to the x dx equal to f of x g of x x e to the x minus f prime of x so it's going to be 1 multiplied by e to the x dx now you see that it's even more simplified so x square became x and now became 1 and 2 but if you make the wrong choices x square will become cube and cube will become 4 actually you know even the powers will increase actually. so what would be this so you can say x e to the x minus this is just e to the x and the integral of e to the x we know what it is plus constant so take this stuff and substitute it in this integral 1 and whatever result comes is your integral so x square e to the x dx will become x square e to the x minus 2 times of x e to the x plus uh, minus e to the x plus constant c so something, something like that you can write it in this manner or you can simplify it a bit more okay so I hope you got some sense of it now I would like to talk about a little bit of a different thing actually what if if I have now not you know x e to the x but um, say x multiplied by sine inverse x of the dx. Uh, say for example, I just want to compute sine inverse x. I would say let's start with say x sine inverse x, and then I can get back to sine inverse x. So I want to compute this x now multiplied with the sine inverse x so here you always have to make one clever choice so see here I can take f of x to be this and g prime of x to be this f of x to be say x and I can take g prime of x to be sine inverse x but I'm going to face a trouble actually. When I took g prime of x to be e to the x, or g prime of x to be sin x, I know how to integrate sin x actually. And I know what is the integral of e of x. But the question is, from g prime, if you want to compute the g of x, you need to do the integral of sin inverse of x. So the question is what is the antiderivative of sine inverse x and we don't know it yet actually we don't know it okay it, it's not here in our elementary list actually it's not present in this list so you don't have the antiderivative of sine inverse of x so you don't know it explicitly for now so what should do short should we do so now i am forced to not choose this as g prime of x because i don't know how to integrate it actually okay or even if you know how to integrate it it would not be something trivial actually so the clever choice here is going to be take f of x to be sine inverse x and take g prime of x to be x actually. Okay. Now this is a good choice. Why? Because I don't know that how to integrate sine inverse x, but I know that how to derivate it actually. So I know what is f prime of x. So the f prime of x is the square root of one minus 
x, 1 over x squared, 1 over 1 minus x squared. And what would be the g of x? So this would be the integral of x dx. So you can say this is going to be x squared upon 2. Okay. So if you have inverse trigonometric function, multiply it with some algebraic function, or even sine function or exponential function, always take the inverse trigonometric function as f of x and other function as g prime of x. That is going to make your life easy. So now if I substitute the values, so what was the formula? f prime of x multiplied, uh, f of x multiplied by g prime of x, which is x sine inverse x as posed by the problem, equal to f of x multiplied by g of x, so it's going to be x squared sine inverse x upon 2, okay, minus minus uh, what would be f prime of x, so f prime of x is the square root of 1 minus x squared and what is g of x, so the g of x is x squared dx ok, g of x is going to be x squared dx so how to solve this integral Example one of the way could be x squared sine inverse x minus x squared over the square root of one minus x squared and dx actually. And this is what you're gonna get. There will be a little trouble here. I'm gonna leave that part as it is uh, because in today's discussion we will not solve that kind of integrals actually. So I'll leave that part for what do you call next discussion. But you know I can make some simplification. So for example I mean one of the trouble now here is that if you um, if I take for example u to be 1 minus x squared its derivative is not there actually. So it's, it's not x 